There are big ones, medium-sized ones, as well as smaller ones. Most of them like to live near a water bank. And their winter actually starts from October. The migration actually started from October, and right now it has、uh, kindly, it has a、uh, kind of、uh, stabilized. And the three, the third key word, you may wonder where they are from. Well, let me tell you, most of them they are from Siberia. They passed through China's Inner Mongolia. And Shanxi Province, and all the way to Shanxi Province, and settle down here in Shengtian Lake. So, what are the stories here in this lake? Well, now let me、uh, switch over to Nai Xin, who is the head of the Shengtian Lake. My name is Tian Nai Xin. I'm a working staff of the Shengtian Lake Scenery Spot. The lake welcomes those swans from November to March next year. We accommodate thousands and tens of thousands of swans. They are wild animals.、Uh, they are wild birds, and they are、uh, big swans, middle-sized swans, as well as、uh, small swans. And most of these birds that you see, they are. The、uh, big swans and they overwinter here, and they are、uh, of different colors. And we have also wild ducks. If you look far away, you will see some、uh, dark-colored flocks. So those are just wild ducks. So I'm very curious why they come all the way here. So wild ducks, they are quite different from those、uh, wild swans. And the wild swans, the Eat meat, for example, the fish in a lake. The swans, the、uh, vegetarians, actually. So that is why each and every day we feed those birds regularly. And those ones, they are very、uh, friendly to human beings. But wild、well, ducks, they are highly、um, sensitive. If they get close to human beings, so that is why we are very close to those swans, but there is a distance with those ducks. So right now you can see that those swans they are getting very eager because we are feeding them. So we just spray some、uh, corns on the ground, and those swans they like that. And those are the wild ones. If they are on their own, they can get some food, but it will not be enough. So that is why we have、uh, working staff here that provide、uh, livestock to them. So you can see that there are two different colors of those ones.、Uh, We have the gray-colored ones. So those are the、uh, young birds or、uh, baby swans. In March next year, the color of their feather will turn into white. So that will be the white goose or white swan that we normally、uh, see. So now you can see that、uh, they are competing for. The food on the ground, and we have a lot of、uh, viewers asking us questions: that will they breed here? Well, the answer is no. They will fly back to Siberia. They will fly back to the northern part of Inner Mongolia and breed there. So they just migrated here, and we just provide them with very good conditions here. So because these ones, they regard this place as the base. And they spent roughly four months here.、Uh, let me add a few words here. They are actually able to fly at an altitude of 9,000 meters, and they are able to fly at a very high speed. So, how many、uh, swans do you have here in this lake? We have more than 50,000. Migratory、uh, swans, 
and for swines in particular, we have uh, 5,000. And before they came here, we spent our underwater uh, activities for travelers. So we just provide them with a very good condition so that they can enjoy their stay here. So truly, we are making a lot of efforts. I believe that those flocks, they move from one place to another every day. Yes, because they are wild birds, and they don't settle down at one place around the clock in a day. So they run about or fly around in this uh, neighborhood, and when they fly to an area, and they're going to come back again. So is that a routine? Do they come here every year at a fixed time? Well, we are working at, at different shifts, and we uh, start our work at 9 o'clock, and we uh, finish our job at 5 uh, p.m. So what we have observed is that they fly here at 9 o'clock in the morning, and some of the swans, they might take a rest at the center of the lake, and uh, some of the swans, they may take a rest in a wetland, and they will fly back the next day because they are wild birds. They practice their flying skills because next March, they will have to fly back to their home, which is Siberia. So what are the other animals we have in addition to swans and ducks? We have all together 90 different types of uh, migratory birds. Right now you can see ducks, uh, gooses, crane. We have many different types of birds here. So the Shengtian Lake truly is featuring a ecological diversity here. Yes, the Shengtian Lake is a national nature reserve, and we are cultivating the um, ecological environment here. And this is also a educational base for ecological preservation and for protection of the environment. So truly, we are providing a lot of uh, care for the uh, swines and many different types of birds. So why they come here every year? One of the reasons is is that we have many different types of different types of uh, plantations, and uh, we have uh, many different types of animal species. So what are the wild species or plantations that you have here? We have weeds, we have lotus, and those can be the food of the cranes or the swines. All right, we can zoom in a little bit. You can see there are a huge number of swans. Some of them are in green color, some are in white color. I believe that they are having fun with each other. Well, they tend to be very protective of their own territory. So, because they are the symbols of love and they tend to live together as a couple or as a family. So normally you will see them in groups of uh, two or three. You can take a look at those uh, swans with the necks that carry a band. So those are the band that we use to track their whereabouts. So we're able to trace their um, migration routes. So those are designed by experts of wild animal protection. So it allows us to know where they are and what is the road or what is the route that they have traveled throughout different periods of the year. Some of the swans are just swimming in the lake. Well, because they are hungry maybe and they need to uh, eat some uh, food, find some food in the lake. It's very uh, strange and they always keep a distance of two meters with human beings. So that is why we set up a fence uh, near the water bank, near the 
呃 lakeside so as to、uh, keep people off from those wild birds. So we need to protect them because they are wild birds and they have to practice some skills. In the meantime, we have to ensure harmonious、uh, coexistence between the birds and human beings. So I saw one swan carrying a band around her neck. So what is that for? So that is actually a GPS. So that is a GPS with a lot of sensors, and this is able to tell us the location of the swine because this is what we call the big swine. And we analyze the migration routes of the birds, so we can actually draw the routes of migration by analyzing their different locations throughout the year. So、uh, some of the swans they can eat a lot of、uh, sand, and this is very helpful to their digestion. And they fight each other. They compete for territory. They're very protective of their own land. So they tend to live in families or in groups. So now you can see that they are getting very cozy. With the absence, with the、uh, presence of human beings, and they can be very close to us. Yes, because they have been with us for a very long time, they are becoming、uh, less cautious when they get close to human beings. So each year after October, we suspend uh, those uh, amusement facilities or programs on water. Simply to provide a good environment for those、uh, swans. Well, it's very strange because each October、uh, there would be five or six or dozens of swans come here in the first place to check if it is safe, and then only after that a huge number, a huge flock of swans would come here. So why you name this、uh, Shengtian Lake? Well, this is、uh, very、um, related to a lake in Beijing. In Beijing, you have uh, this uh, Rending Lake,、uh, so we just call it Shengtian Lake. If you combine these the two names together, it's the human beings can overcome nature. So this shows how much attention that we are paying to. Harmonious coexistence between、uh, man and nature. So Shengtian Lake is actually very big, and it spans across different cities in the province. So Shengtian Lake has become a new home for those birds. Exactly because then they will be here until March. So this is their home、uh, temporarily for four months of the year. You can see that a lot of the swans they just overwinter here. They have fun here. They are truly having a pleasant time here. So, dear viewers of、uh, CGTN, my name is He Weitong. I'm right now at the Shengtian Lake National Nature Reserve at Yuncheng City of Shanxi Province. So, we are taking you to a closer look of those swans. And just now, Tian Naixin, a working staff from the Scenery spots told me that they are making a lot of efforts to protect those swans, and they feed them regularly on a daily basis. And also, they suspend their amusement programs on water simply to provide a very caring environment for those birds. May I now switch off to another guest? Who is Zhang Weibo? Who is a animal protection patroller of Yuncheng County? So say hello to our viewers. So good morning, all the viewers. I believe you have made a lot of、uh, innovative efforts.、Uh, Mr. Zhang has personally piloted a lot of、uh, measures. For example, he hired a lot of the locals as volunteers of wild swine protection. So tell me, what is the work that you do here? So every day at nine o'clock, we start our work. We 
patrol around the lake. We just observe all those uh, birds. Uh, if we encounter any injuries on those uh, birds, we immediately um, bring them to treatment. So when you patrol, uh, do you walk or do you ride a bike? So we are riding a motorbike. So how large is the radius that you uh, patrol about? Well, it's more than 10 kilometers. So that is the size of the nat uh, National Nature Reserve. Yes, and this is just the uh, size of the lake. And each and every day, uh, we'll patrol uh, two times. And by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we'll finish our patrol. So, which means that each and every day you conduct a routine patrolling around the lake just to see that if any birds are in any types of injury. So, are there a lot of injuries? No, there are not so many injuries because we have dramatically improved the protection. Have you ever encountered any severe injuries? Yes, last year we identified a very terrible injury, which is and brought the bird to the uh, care station, and we gave the bird a very careful treatment, so it's got recovered. So what are the other job responsibilities that you are assuming? Because these birds, they migrate here all the way from Siberia. So we also conduct a routine disinfection effort. So the dis disinfection um, goes just around this area. Yes. So can you show us the disinfectant that they're using? So this is uh, seventy-five percent of uh, alcohol. So you just uh, pour this into the disinfection uh, kettle, and then you spray it around this area. Yes. On a daily basis, are you also uh, monitoring potential epidemics?
，左右他们来的。啊、对对。肉，哎，以前来的少。Traditionally, there were not so many swines migrating here every year, but the number has been increasing year by year. So right now, uh, in this wetland, you have uh, four to five thousand of uh, swines. So this shows that the number is on an increase, and gradually, you are developing a rapport or a close sentiment with those uh, swines. Yes, exactly. Have you encountered any familiar swines? Between different years, yes, we can tell that because some of the swans they are wearing a very um, uh, identifiable uh, necks. Uh, we know that, for example, that one with the big uh, neck band. The bird was here also last year. And now you can see that there are some visitors providing food. To the swines. So we have a lot of patrollers, and most of them are villagers. Yes, most of them are villagers uh, from uh, villages uh, nearby. So we have uh, roughly eight patrollers. <laughs> So we are running uh, two shifts. Uh, each shift has uh, four staff. Um, for example, in the morning we have one shift that's four villagers. In the afternoon, there will be a different uh, shift. So altogether, we are patrolling along this uh, lane of uh, 13 kilometers. So how many months do you patrol every year? So we patrol for four months throughout the year, and that is from November to that is from October to March next year. So basically, it's November, December, January, February. Uh, for the remaining part of the year, uh, would it be busy with some uh, farm work? Dear viewers of uh, CGTN, good morning. Again, my name is He Weichong. I'm a journalist with the China Media Group. Now in the footage, you can see a huge uh, flocks of uh, swine the, uh, eating the corns sprayed on the ground. And just now, we had a conversation with the patroller. Uh, he has been doing that voluntary patrolling for seven years. Uh, right now, he has developed a, a strong emotional bond with all the birds. On a daily basis, he patrol uh, more than 10 kilometers. Uh, he even told us that he saved or cured one of the injured swans. And after treatment, uh, they also released the swans. I believe that similar amount of efforts are made also by the forestry authority in Yuancheng. And uh, so my name is uh, Li Kang. I'm the deputy head of the Forestry Bureau of uh, Xire County. So tell us what efforts have you made, have your department made for protecting those uh, birds? We engage in a lot of uh, publicity campaigns. We do a lot of patrols as well. And uh, we take a lot of measures to uh, very, uh, very well protect those uh, birds. And uh, one of the key efforts that we engage is uh, publicity, and we distribute um, brochures and notices just to tell people to protect these uh, birds. 
Those are the very traditional efforts. Are you are you using some new、um, platforms? So right now we are in a stage of、uh, social networking,、uh, social media, and we post a lot of、uh, contents online on WeChat, so people can raise their awareness of、uh, environmental protection. We also work closely together with、uh, schools. We bring the knowledge to classrooms so the students、uh, get to develop a sense of、uh, animal protection.、Uh, through all these efforts, I believe that. At different levels, at the township level, at the village level, the general population has improved their awareness of、uh, wild animal protection. On the one hand, we engage in publicity campaigns. On the other hand, we arrange、uh, patrollers. Who conduct regular、uh, observations of those、uh, birds? So, can you tell us more about the patrolling part? In 2015, we set up the protection base, and we established the patroller system. And we established also a distance monitoring system or a distance a distance surveillance system, because most of these birds they settle here in this lake, but、uh, they sometimes、uh, migrate to nearby areas. So we can monitor that situation from a distance.、Uh, we have also installed a lot of surveillance cameras、uh, cameras at different、uh, places. And those patrollers and the uh, personally uh, monitoring the situation with their naked eyes, and they can very immediately report any situation that they encounter.、Uh, if there is a very serious situation,、uh, we would immediately report the situation to the provincial level monitoring base. So at the provincial center, they have a monitoring、uh, system that can be connected to the surveillance cameras here, and they are able to tell the differences or any、uh, anomalies. So、uh, we report on a daily basis. Well, we have to engage in very careful protection because they are only here for four months of the twelve months of the year, and we have、uh, white cranes, we have、uh, wild ducks, and swines and gooses. So, truly, this is a very diverse、uh, flock of birds. So, when we patrol, we do not just focus on those. Swans. We are patrolling over this area for all the birds living here. So all the patrollers and the villagers nearby. Yes, you're right. And this is just a temporary job because they have the best knowledge about the、uh, landscape here.、Uh, they know where there's water, where there's fish.、Uh, they know every inch of the land here. So they are the locals here. So they have the best knowledge here. So that's why they are given a job. Yes, you said it very well. And the locals, they have the best knowledge about this place. And also, you are establishing a lot of、uh, surveillance、uh, stations. You are using some、uh, modern monitoring tools just to、uh, guarantee that the situation of these birds are carefully monitored. As you just saw, that we have a disinfectant here. We also have a, a protective、uh, suits for epidemic control.、Uh, we are monitoring the epidemics amongst these、uh, flocks of birds. We are also taking COVID-19 measures, and we have、uh, protective、uh, suits. And also disinfectants here, and we do disinfection routinely on a daily basis. And we have to crack down on those who poison those birds intentionally.
and this is a very crucial part of our job. Um, we are very committed to cracking down on those uh, illegal behaviors. Uh, we also have uh, some contingency uh, facilities, and uh, for example, for example, uh, one boxes just in case if any of the birds get injured. So you said it very well, and each and every day we are conducting a routine disinfection, and this is very useful. And we are monitoring their day-to-day -day behaviors, and we are also cracking down on those who engage in illegal um, or misconduct, such as poisoning those birds or hunting those birds. I have but one more question. I covered similar programs before, and traditionally you use the word feed, but right now you're changing that into supplementary feeding. So why is that? Well, we try to minimize human impact over the birds. If we are feeding them 100%, we are diminishing their uh, wild uh, nature. Fundamentally, so that is why uh, we just, you know, give them some additional uh, food, for example, vegetables or corns. We provide them uh, with a very little uh, livestock or feeds because they are wild birds and they can uh, live and survive on their own. And just in case when the lake freezes in uh, cold winter, when they cannot find sufficient food, we can just give them additional supplementary f uh, livestock. So by doing so, we can still allow the birds to practice their uh, skills. When they are coming here each and every year, and the number is increasing, and we cannot afford to see those birds starving. So we have to provide them with at least some food, and this is not quite a significant impact over on their uh, lifestyle. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're actually providing a very favorable condition. So when did this phenomenon Start well. It's actually it has actually started from uh, prior to 2000, and since 2005, we have uh, started to see a big increase of the number. And this year, obviously, you can see more and a huge number of uh, the swans. Well, each and every year the number is different, and uh, this year I believe we have more than six or even seven thousand. Because this year we had a lot of uh, precipitation, and the water level of the lake has increased, and there is a lot of uh, plantation and pre in the lake. Well, in recent years, the ecological environment of China has improved dramatically, and, it, and this is uh, especially the case here in this part of the province. So that is why it has become a very attractive place to all the swines. In Inner Mongolia and in Gansu, there are flocks of swines as well. Uh, in Pingu County, in Sanmenxia, even in Hubei province, there are flocks of uh, swines settling down there in winter. So this is truly a remarkable phenomenon. And we can see that in winter, when Siberia becomes too cold for those birds, they migrate to the southern part. Uh, this means Inner Mongolia, uh, Shanxi and Shanxi province, and even China's Hubei province. So with the improvement of ecological conditions in many parts of the country, we are seeing that the number of uh, migratory uh, swines uh, on an increase, and this shows that we are attaching great importance to ecological preservation and environmental protection. Well, I think it's the same for human beings. As long as you have a good environment, you will have a 
big population gathering. All right, ladies and gentlemen. And just now we had a few words with the deputy head of the Forestry Bureau of the county, and they're taking a lot of measures. For example, disinfection, monitoring, and human patrol. That really taking a whole set of、uh, measures to protect those wild birds. And going forward, we have to intensify our efforts in preserving the wetland environment.、Uh, we have a wetland national nature reserve.、Uh, how big is the reserve? So the Rachen County is just one part of uh, this uh, jurisdiction covered by this.、Uh, Nature reserve. I believe that it's covering 160,000 hectares, and this is just a rough figure. But it's very big in general, and it's a very large area, and we don't have a exact number in acre. But over the years, we have made a lot of efforts. The plantations of this area has increased dramatically. In Shengtian Lake, in particular, we have、uh, 238 different types of animals and 147 plants. We have 58 types of fishes、uh, in this、uh, wetland. We、uh, focusing mainly on preservation, and development comes only. Second, so we are striking a balance between preservation and development. We are minimizing human impact over the natural environment. So, what are the efforts that you make to preserve? Well, it's very simple. As I mentioned, that we have to minimize human activities.、Uh, we are refraining from. Building、uh, new facilities on this、uh, lake, for example, it's not allowed to dig a fishing pond in this area. So we are minimizing human activities so as to、uh, maximize our preservation of the environment. So those are the measures that we take. So we want it to be natural.、Uh, we are minimizing human activities. Just so that this can be a very natural place. To just give you one other example, sometimes on the lake may be drained and there might be、uh, less water or even no water.、And、in such circumstances, we wouldn't pump water from elsewhere and channel them here, channel the water here. It doesn't work because we have to、uh, stay off the. Natural course of development. Well, thanks to your effort, we are seeing that the、uh, types of plantation and animals and species here are on an increase year by year. As you have mentioned, that、uh, at the very beginning, this is just an artificial lake. At the very beginning, it's just a water pond.、Uh, in those、uh, beginning years, and there are not so much water and. Year after year, thanks to your effort, the pond got、uh, expanded, and after 2000, you、uh, kicked off a building project. You dramatically extended the acre of the、uh, lake. Now the lake is covering 1,600 mu. So this is the largest lake in this、uh, area. So in Shengtian Lake, as you mentioned, that、uh, we are covering more than thirteen、uh, thousand mu of、uh, acre. We are truly engaging in a lot of efforts to protect the natural environment, and we are developing this area on a basis on a premise of、uh, preservation. And、um, prior to the development, it's just. A water pond. You have to engage in some protective measures. For example, you have to develop certain part of this area. You have to set rules. 
uh, Sweden people's behaviors and the developments in this area truly started in 2000, and it's you know after 10 years, um, it's um, it has shown the size of uh, the lake that we see today, and after another 10 years, this is what we can see right now. So what are the other measures taken by the local government in preserving ecological environment? Our county is a national level demonstration county for ecological preservation, and this shows how much effort that we have made over the years, and also we are restoring uh, the forest and grassland and wetland in our county. And we set a lot of standards for the enterprises operating here. So it's not those, uh, it's not just those words, uh, this, uh, those uh, birds that you see. That if you go to the mountains, you can see a lot of wild rabbits and even um, boars. So this tells you the progress that uh, we have made over the years. And the progress actually has been quite visible. A lot of the birds, they look very uh, strange to me. I think I only saw them when I was a kid. Over the past few years, with the improvement of our environment, a lot of the birds, they are flying back again. And I saw them again. And it's such a strange feeling. So the species of the animals are on an increase, and they are coming back to the region county. So we talked about those ones, and some are in gray color, some are in white color. The gray color ones, they are these one babies. So uh, what is their average uh, lifespan? Well, they're they can live up to 17 years old on average. How about this one? Well, this is still a small bird. The color fades away gradually. Take a look at the nose. The nose becomes white first, and then the neck, and then and the wings. So if it's an adult, the nose turns into the color of yellow, so it's quite strange. So if we're talking about a baby swan, the wings and the feather, and they're in a color of gray, but the nose is in a color of white. But with the passage of time, as it grows up, the nose will turn yellow and the feather will turn white. Can you tell the female ones from the male ones? Well, it's uh, quite easy, actually, if you spend sufficient time with these birds. And they tend to live as couples. And they follow this, uh, exactly the same pattern uh, every day. For example, if one bird is not eating, the other bird is not eating. And only when one bird is, uh, has started eating, then the other members of the family will start eating. So it's quite strange. So they live in families, actually. Earlier today in the morning, when we came here, we saw huge uh, flocks of swans. And that is a big family. And right now, you can see that they are in different groups. And they're often in groups of two or three or four. And sometimes the family can be very big. Now you can see that the flocks of uh, swines far away, they are the newcomers this year. Uh, they still haven't found time to uh, get along well with uh, those uh, existing flocks. So they tend to, they like human society and they live together in groups as families or as a uh, large uh, group. So will they go to a different place next year? 
Across the country, we have uh, wild animal protection uh, stations at different levels, at the national level, at the provincial level. Uh, we are putting on uh, bands on their necks and on their feet. So this allows us to obtain data about their travel. Uh, we had the plan this year to build a, a facility around this area, uh, which is responsible for putting on those uh, food bands on those swines. But right now we haven't done that. But we have the plan to increase our monitoring about those uh, wild animals. Well, this will enable better understanding about those birds. So you're telling me that you have the plan to establish a wild animal preservation center right across the lake? Yes, that is our plan, and uh, that center will be solely responsible for putting those uh, small bands on those birds. And this is for the better protection of those uh, wild birds. A lot of the swans, they are on the water, they are swimming uh, in the lake. So do they never come to the bank? No, they always, um, they almost all come to the bank. And if you see that they are burying their head in their feather, and those are the birds sleeping right now. And you can zoom in and you can take a look at those uh, sleeping birds. Some of these ones, they, uh, uh, they are actually sleeping because uh, look at their neck and head, and that is almost buried by their feather. Uh, this is their afternoon nap, and so they took two naps in the day and in the evening this place becomes very quiet and because no one is uh, uh, shouting like this so in a day and they fight each other they compete for territory they argue sometimes they sing and it's very uh, uh, it's very vibrant a scene and you can see that these uh, swans, they are truly enjoying themselves here. Do you know how much they eat every day? They eat a lot. If you just talk about the corns that we feed them, uh, each and every year we feed roughly 10 tons of uh, corn. And that's a lot for those birds. They do eat a lot on a daily basis. I don't know the specific uh, figure, but if you consult the animal experts, you will get the answer. So at the wild animal monitoring station at the provincial level, and they can tell you the exact figure, they have the technology to know how much food that they eat every day. At the county level, we also have a wild animal monitoring station, and that is affiliated to our bureau, actually. So what is the relationship between that station and your bureau? So that station is actually uh, largely independent, but we work closely together on a routine basis. A lot of the travelers, they come here to just take a photo with these birds. Well, gradually, and these ones, they have become the key attraction of this scenery spot to travelers. You can see that they are eating corns on the ground, but sometimes they are also eating the sand on the ground. And they also eat the roots of lotus. 
so they do eat a wide range of uh, different types of food. And do they also eat fish from the lake? No, and these ones, they are vegetarians and they never eat meat. So they are basically eating the corns on the ground as well as the uh, lotus seed in the ground. So here in this uh, Shengtian Lake, we do not have a lot of uh, plantation in the lake. So when they are here for these four months, uh, they would just eat the uh, corns as well as some of the weed and lotus seed. And we also provide them with some uh, cabbages. So this year in particular, we have had uh, sufficient rainfalls. The water um, level on the lake has increased dramatically. We do have a different range of um, plantation uh, in this uh, neighborhood, so it has attracted more birds. So they can fly in the air and they can land on the lake. So they're not standing in one place all the time. It's just like human beings. Uh, we would pay visits to our neighbors and friends and then come back. So wherever there is food, there is pleasant environment, there will be a lot of swans. So when they get well fed, uh, they return to where they settle. So they flew all the way from Siberia to Mongolia, to Inner Mongolia, to the Yellow River Basin, and then all the way to Shanxi province, to this county. Yes, they are very good at flying. As you have learned in school the survival of the fittest, and if they cannot fly, they will die. There are a lot of casualties uh, during the process of migration. Uh, some die in this process because they are not good enough at flying. We do a lot of monitoring according to the data that we have obtained. Some birds actually have died uh, between last year and this year, and this is the um, survival of the fittest law. So what about those small birds? Can those uh, baby swans fly this high and this fast? Well, they're only spending the winter here, and after they go back to Siberia, they will train their skills for one year, and after training their skill for one year, they will be able to fly to the south in winter again. So they are only spending the winter here. So is this possible because that we have a relatively higher temperature? Yes, I believe this is part of the reason. We have plenty of food, we have a very pleasant temperature, so that is why they are spending roughly three to four months here. Uh, next year, by the end of uh, February, they're going to fly to a different place. They're going to fly back. So, in a distance, you can see a huge number of wild dogs. We have a lot of water in the lake this year. You can see we are truly attracting a huge amount of birds. So take a look at those wild ducks, and they are very um, protective of themselves, and they keep a distance with human beings. And yesterday when we were here, we also saw these uh, huge flocks of uh, birds. They are actually wild ducks flying in the sky. If you are uh, providing food here on the ground, and they will fly here very quickly, and then after eating the food, they will fly immediately back to above the lake. And we also take samples 
And this is partially、uh, the job of the monitoring station, and we analyze their、uh, lifestyle and their health status. We're taking a very、um, precautious measure in epidemiological control, and we see to it that there is no bird flus or potential epidemics among the birds population. So、uh, this is also for the fundamental purpose of protecting human beings, and the wild swans they tend to live for a very、um, big number of years. So that is why we are analyzing、uh, their health status. For example, my colleague, he is very experienced, and、uh, he is able to just. Tell by their appearances、uh, to see that if they are in a very good physical shape. Over the years, the country has invested heavily in ecological preservation. Apart from well. Duck and、uh, swan. What are the other animals that you have here? We have a、uh, white cranes. We have many different birds here, and they are living harmony here. And this is truly extraordinary. And they each have their own territory or land, and they fight each other, of course. But in general, they are very harmoniously getting along well with each other. And this is truly remarkable. And most of the wild swan, they can spend some time on a bank, but most of the wild ducks, they tend to keep a distance from human beings. If you look far away, if we have a good、uh, weather、uh, vis uh, visibility today, you will be able to see the、uh, Yellow River. From where you are standing right now. So what is this lake for? And this lake is、uh, partially for irrigation. And we don't normally have floods, so the lake is mainly for irrigation purposes. So mainly we stock water here, and when we have、uh, drought in some of the nearby region. We channel the water to those regions to、uh, irrigate the farmland. So that is the main purpose of this lake when it was、uh, built. But right now it has become a scenic spot and it's attracting a huge flock of wild birds and it has become an attraction to other travelers as well. So from this you can see that when we have good environment, good water quality, we will be able to attract a huge number of birds. Now you can see there are also a huge number of travelers. That this is the case yesterday when I came here, and today it's very cold, but we still have some visitors. And if you come here by the weekend, you will see a lot of travelers.、And、I was told that on weekends you have thousands of travelers or visitors. Yes, and this is the case, and the visitor number has also increased dramatically. So where are they from? They are mostly from nearby counties, and we are bordering Henan as well as、uh, Hebei province. So we do attract travelers and visitors from different provinces and different cities as well, and so when they know that this is a place with a lot of swans. They tend to come here and just to take a photo with those、uh, very beautiful birds. I believe it's not just travelers; it's also photographers. Yes, and talking about the photographers, and they tend to stay here for days and weeks simply to、uh, capture the、uh, excellent、uh, shot that they are looking forward to. So this is truly a attractive place day by day. In 
we organized a photography uh, competition. Uh, we also held a competition in sports, which is uh, bicycling around the lake. So with this just once, I think that you are truly fostering a ecosystem as well as 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 well as a business uh, system here. Yes, we have uh, Lucy Water, we have Lost Mountains, and this is truly making our place more and more attractive. I think this is a microcosm of China's gradually improving ecological environment. Dear viewers from CGTN, good morning again. Uh, my name is uh, Wei Dong. I'm a journalist from China Media Group. Today we are here at the Shengtian Lake scenic spot in Shanxi's Yuncheng City, and there are huge flocks of uh, swines. There are travelers, and we just had interviews with the local officials, and they told us how they are making efforts in preserving the local environment. So this is all to today. Thank you very much for watching.